Hey guys, so we're gonna fix the problem that we were having with type orm in the last video. And what I think was the problem was in our orm config. So in the production uh, section, we specified that our entities were in source entity, oops, and that is just not the case. If we look at the dist code, there is no source folder. So we, something like this might work if we did just change it to something like that. But I don't really want to deal with any type of path issues or whatnot with type orm. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of this um, whole section right here and uh, go directly to where we create the type orm con uh, connection. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just specify the entities myself. So right now we just have one entity, so I'm just going to pass it in like so. So I'm only going to do this in production. So in production we're going to, because it seems to work fine in development, in production, what I'm going to do is just specify the entities myself and pass them in and import them like so. So that's the other way you can pass in entities. Um, and now I don't have to worry about uh, if I change the path later or something, I don't have to fix those things. It is just right there. All right, now there's a con to this too, right? So whatever entity we, ha we add, we have to remember to add it here, which I might forget later. So this may cause problems later. Pick whichever one you like better. Um, all right, so now we need to basically just redeploy stuff. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't wanna go through that entire process each time I make a change, because uh, it's quite a few steps, right? We have to build our code, build the Docker image, push the Docker image, pull the Docker image, and then deploy it to Docker. So we're gonna automate that. And to help us automate it, we're gonna be using a tool called Lerna, um, at least locally. So go ahead and install this. So npm install global. Uh, I already did that, and then we're going to run lerna init. So we're going to run this in the root directory. So I'm in ab, uh, and I'm going to do uh, lerna init in this. And now you should get a new file called lerna.json, and uh, this is, should be what it looks like. Now, to integrate this with yarn workspaces, we have to add two parts. So yarn recommends we specify the npm client to be yarn and that we're using workspaces. So we just add these two things to our Lerna config file. All right, so now Lerna knows that we're using uh, yarn and we're also using workspaces. So the reason why I wanted to add Lerna is we need to build our code on every change, right? Or at least whenever we want to deploy. But we don't just need to build our server code, we need to build our common code as well, right? Because if we're building um, the server it relies on common, so if we made changes to that package, we have to deploy it. So right now, to do that thing, what I would have to do is I have to CD into server, I'd run yarn build, and then I would CD out, right? And I'd go to common, and I'd run yarn build, right? So we're going to do that all that stuff in one step. Oops, we'll go up one more. So in our package.json, we are going to add a script. So you can add scripts to this just like you would any other package.json. And I'm gonna call this uh, build, and this is gonna be build server. And what this is gonna do is we're gonna say lerna run build. So what lerna run build does is it goes to every package and builds it. Now, because we're specifically doing the server, we don't really wanna build controller or the web, at least that'd be a waste. So you can do uh, a scope to this. And here we can specify the packages we want it to build. So I would like it to build common, and I would also like it to build the server. So now if I do yarn uh, build server, build server, it's going to run this script, which should build our code. Uh, and so we're just gonna run that every time beforehand, and this will go ahead and build our code in the two directories that we need it in. All right, so that takes care of the building part on this. Now we're gonna create a script that's going to deploy everything for us. So I'm gonna create a new file here, and I'm gonna say uh, deploy.sh. Um, and I'm going to say slash bin slash bash, and here I'm just, we're gonna specify the steps that we need that basically we just follow every single time. So the first thing is is to go ahead and run yarn uh, build server. And that'll do exactly what we just did there, which will compile our code. The next thing we do is, and we can just type them out here, right? So we'll usually do docker build. So 
I'm gonna copy that here. And I'm just gonna call this latest and not worry about versions. And then we're gonna push our code. So docker push, and then we specify a uh, package we wanna push. Paste that in. And then the next step is we would usually SSH into our server. So let's copy that. And I should I want to actually run that. So SSH. Um, and then when I'm here, first thing I'm going to do, and we can just go up and we can see it. So we want to pull the image. So Docker pull. And here you want to add this uh, these commands right here and then what this will do is it'll SSH into the server and then run these commands. So I'm going to say latest and then I'm going to say and. So we're going to do this command and then we're going to do another command after it. Uh, the one after that is we uh, we don't deploy right away. We do we tag it. So we're going to copy that, paste it in here and again renaming the tag here to latest. And then the last thing that we do is we actually just deploy it. And we run docu tags deploy latest. There we go. And we added ampersand at the end and we paste it in. All right, so let me just drop this on a new line so you can see. So we pull the image. After we pull the image, we do ampersand and then we're tagging it. And then lastly, we deploy it. So that's the three commands that we run on the server. All right, and I think that's good. That sh this should compile our code locally, push it, and do all the stuff it needs to do on the server. So we're gonna run this, and then we'll test out our code and make sure it works. So I'm gonna change bot it, uh, and then I'm gonna make it executable. Call it deploy, and I really should call this like uh, deploy server DigitalOcean. Um, I'm just, I should really call it uh, dot sh at the end too. All right, so that's our shell script. Let's go ahead and run it. Deploy server to DigitalOcean. All right, so it did stuff with no problems. Well, let's head over here and actually test it out. So I have 10 minute mail. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh, uh, copy it and send myself an email and send it uh, my exceed sending limit. So it looks like I've sent too many emails with my uh, API key. That's unfortunate. It just didn't happen to happen on this case. Uh, I think it went ahead and created the user. Uh, one way we could try is we could log in. Um, and it says, please confirm your email. And if we come back to our code, I believe if it makes it that far, um, let's go to our modules login resolver. So if it makes it to the point where it says I have to confirm my email, that means I would have had to fetch a user and uh, I didn't throw any errors. So perfect. So it looks like the user did get created. Looks like my API token just got expired at that moment. So I'm gonna have to do uh, add a different one in. But there we go. So that's how uh, you can deploy changes now. So whenever you make any changes in the server or the common and you want your uh, docu instance, you just run dot slash deploy and you're good to go.